Hey everyone, and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Quick disclaimer before we move on, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read the disclaimer in its entirety before moving on. Channel plug, here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to bring you interesting, relevant, and understandable medical education for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. If you want to follow along, we do have a lovely subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of all the videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And lastly, if you'd like to support us outside of viewing our videos, we have several ways in which you can do that linked in the video description and pinned comment. Stay well, keep learning, and back to the video. All right, and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the interesting topic of the alveolar arterial gradient. This is going to be one of those videos that more so targets um, people in uh, healthcare or medicine, um, but anyone interested obviously is welcome to follow along. So what we'll be doing in this video is talking about what the AA gradient is, what the math is behind it, why that math makes sense, what the normal ranges are, what the abnormal ranges are, and then how to use it. It's kind of going to be the, the quick and dirty in terms of understanding and using the alveolar arterial gradient. It's a great way to kind of further differentiate causes of hypoxia or low oxygen levels, um, as there's a lot of different you know etiologies or causes of low oxygen levels. So it's one of those tools in your toolkit for a patient who is hypoxic um, of unclear etiology or unclear reason, um, and then how the results of it can drive some of your decision-making moving forward. So the AA gradient, or the alveolar arterial gradient, essentially measures the difference in the oxygen concentration between the alveoli, which are the you know, air sacs of the lungs, and the arteries, um, obviously where the oxygen um, goes into after they're absorbed from the alveoli. The gradient itself is essentially the difference in the concentration between the oxygen in those two areas. So when you breathe in, this is your windpipe, your trachea, you breathe in there, the oxygen goes into your bronchi, um, into smaller and smaller branches until it gets into the alveoli. So these are your two lungs. If you zoom way in, you'll find a bazillion, you know, it's a scientific number, a huge number of these alvei alveoli or these air sacs. Um, this is the lining in red of the air sac. And what happens is oxygen goes in that you breathed in. The oxygen gets absorbed into the artery, which is the darker red line. Carbon dioxide comes from the artery out into the air sac, and then you breathe out the carbon dioxide. So this is where gas exchange occurs. So the equation then is the difference in oxygen in this alveoli, you know, that you breathed in compared to the oxygen in the arteries itself. So it tells you kind of how oxygen is diffusing across the alveolar wall. The equation is the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli, the big A, minus the partial pressure of oxygen in the artery or the small A. When you break that down, essentially the alveolar partial pressure is the com more complex equation. And it's going to be the atmospheric pressure, which is about 760 at sea level, minus the partial pressure of just water, which is a generic, you know, at sea level 47. So, you know, this portion of the equation is going to be 760 minus 47. And we should have done our math ahead of time. Let's hope we don't do it wrong, which is going to equal what 7 if we say 713, does that make sense? Yes, it does. So this portion of the equation is going to be 713. All right, so we'll cross that out and write 713. You then multiply that by the FiO2. That's the fraction of inspired oxygen. If it's someone on room air or RA, room air, that is 21%, all right, because that's how much oxygen is just out in the air. But if you're giving someone supplemental oxygen, then you have to change that fraction of inspired oxygen. So if they're on 100% FiO2, you know, you would make this 100%. If they're on nasal cannula, well, this will, you know, maybe be another lecture, but nasal cannula NC, the percent of oxygen increases by 4% per 1 liter of 
of nasal cannula oxygen. So if you put them on four liters of nasal cannula, that's going to be four times four percent because it's four liters, 16 percent on top of the 21 percent. So that would be 37 percent fraction inspired oxygen. And we actually maybe we'll do a whole separate video on converting nasal cannula to FiO2 if that's something interesting to you. You then subtract this whole side, right, 713, which is the partial pressure in the atmosphere, minus the partial pressure of water, 760 minus 47, which these are kind of just standard numbers, not anything you calculate, times the fraction of inspired oxygen, which at room air is 21%, or it's dependent on how much supplemental oxygen you're giving them, and then you subtract the PaCO2. This is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that you can get from an arterial blood gas, and we went over ABGs in a previous video. We'll link that in the video uh, comment that we pin, and divide it by the RQ. The RQ is the respiratory quotient, and it's 0 0.08 is kind of the standard um, for, for people, and this is pretty much just dependent on kind of, you know, the diet and metabolic demands of a person, but you can just use 0 0.8 for the sake of this equation. So this whole portion is the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. You then subtract it by the PaO2. Luckily, the PaO2 is the partial pressure of oxygen, which you just get off an ABG. So all you need to do this calculation is an ABG to get the PaCO2 and the PaO2, all right? And then you just need the fraction of inspired oxygen that they are on, whether it be room air or supplemental oxygen. And then otherwise, the rest of these are constants. So you just need an arterial blood gas and then know how much oxygen they're on. And as we talked about this equation, what is this? it is essentially looking at is whether they are hypoxic and have a low blood oxygen content because the oxygen can't diffuse across the membrane of the alveoli meaning there's a big di discordance between how much oxygen is in the alveoli, how much oxygen you're breathing in, and then how much the alveoli are absorbing into the artery, right? So the PaO2, the amount of oxygen in the alveoli, compared to the amount of oxygen being absorbed, the P little AO2, or the oxygen in the artery, all right? Or if you're breathing in, you know, the same amount of oxygen that you're absorbing, but there's a different problem in how you're breathing that oxygen in. So the expected AA gradient can be calculated age plus 10 divided by 4, right? So if you're 50, it's going to be 50. If you're 50 years old, 50 plus 10, which is 60, divided by 4. If you're 30 years old, it's going to be 30 plus 10 divided by 4, all right? It's typically between 5 and 10, but you can just use this expected AA gradient to calculate it. So how do we interpret it then? You know, what is the interpretation you you know, were excellent in your clinical gestalt. You saw someone who was hypoxic with low oxygen concentrations. You took their, you did an arterial blood gas on them. You found their fraction of inspired oxygen based on how much supplemental oxygen you're on. You calculated the AA gradient. How do you use the results? Well, if a person is hypoxic and has a low oxygen, but they have a normal AA gradient, H plus 10 divided by 4, then what that is telling you is that they're not having any trouble absorbing the oxygen from the alveoli into the blood. They're having trouble getting enough oxygen into the alveoli or breathing enough oxygen in. And what this can be from is either alveolar hypoventilation, let's say you have obstructive sleep apnea and you can't breathe in enough oxygen because excess tissues, you know, in your throat. Or let's say you have obesity hypoventilation syndrome, where your chest wall is so heavy you can't take deep enough breaths. That would all be things that would cause less oxygen to be coming into the alveoli, and thus you're hypoxic, but you have a normal AA gradient, meaning the oxygen is diffusing normally. The oxygen that was able to get into the alveoli is diffusing normally into the arteries. All right. Other things could be low partial pressure of inspired oxygen, so they're just not getting enough oxygen. Maybe they're at altitude or something like that. And both of these things will correct with supplemental oxygen. So if you put the person on more oxygen, their hypoxia will resolve. The second option is that they have a raised AA gradient or a high AA gradient, meaning that they're getting enough oxygen into their alveoli, but that oxygen can't diffuse into their artery. So there's a diffusion problem um, across this kind of alveolar barrier. The other potential option 
is that the oxygen could diffuse across the membrane well enough, but there's actually not enough blood flow to the artery around this alveoli, so there's nowhere for this oxygen to diffuse into. And that gets us into kind of the two different things here. So one of them partially corrects with oxygen. So if you put oxygen on them, their hypoxia will get better. The other one won't correct with supplemental oxygen. So the one that will partially correct with supplemental oxygen is a diffusion defect. And that is what we talked about up here. So you get enough oxygen into the alveoli, but there's something going on where that oxygen can't diffuse across the alveoli into the artery itself. Maybe you're fluid overloaded, so there's fluid in the alveoli, or maybe you have pneumonia, so there's pus in there, or maybe you're bleeding, so there's blood in there. Something is preventing the diffusion of this oxygen into the artery itself. The other thing is a VQ mismatch. VQ is ventilation perfusion. And this is a complex topic we can talk about in a separate video. Um, but the kind of biggest thing we talk about with VQ mismatch is something like a blood clot or pulmonary embolism. All right. So what this is saying is your AA gradient is raised because the oxygen in the alveoli can diffuse just fine, but you have a blood clot in the artery. So there actually isn't enough blood flow getting to the alveoli and thus the oxygen can't diffuse into that artery. And both of these, a diffusion defect and a VQ mismatch, will partially correct with supplemental oxygen. So if you increase the amount of supplemental oxygen they're getting, their hypoxia will get better, but it won't resolve. The other potential thing with a raised AA gradient is a right-to-left shunt, either pulmonary or cardiac. So what a right-to-left shunt is, is here we're going to draw a quick heart, you know, beautiful drawings there. You have two sides to your heart, right? Your right side, your right atrium and your right ventricle, and that right side pumps blood to the lungs. We'll just draw a little lungs here. Those are lungs. And the blood from the lungs that is now oxygenated goes to the left side of the heart, left atrium, left ventricle, which then pumps blood to the rest of the body. Okay? So if you have a right to left shunt, it means that your blood on the right side of the heart is being shunted to the left side of the heart before it goes through the lungs. So this is going to be deoxygenated blood, right? It didn't travel through the lungs, and it is being shunted from the right to the left. That can happen if someone has, you know, a little hole in their um, interventricular septum, right? Or a ventricular septal defect, a VSD. It can happen if you have a patent foramen ovale, which is, you know, a little hole in your atrial septum, atrial septal defect, all right? It can, you know, happen if there's a connection between the arteries or veins in the lung. Anything that bypasses the, ox the blood from traveling through the lungs normally. That won't correct with oxygen, right? Because you can give as much oxygen as you want into the lungs, but if that blood is not flowing into the lungs, it's just going from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart, that blood's never going to come in contact with that increased oxygen concentration. So that will not correct with oxygen. All right? So that is how to calculate, understand, and interpret the AA gradient. It's something that probably isn't used enough clinically, um, and we are actually going to come out with a future video on the approach to hypoxemia, um, which utilizes the AA gradient in kind of that um, algorithm. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Let us know if this was helpful or not helpful, what other topics you want us to cover. Um, and in any case, stay well, keep learning, and we will see you all next time.